Good. Many times we have to administer large volumes of fluids, as many as 10 gallons to these cattle um, to help rehydrate, to apply, supply certain electrolytes. In order to get that procedure done, we actually have a different setup. This setup involves three components. It involves a frick speculum. This frick speculum is placed into the mouth and the cow is allowed to chew on the frick speculum and that will protect our tube, which is the next component. This is a nasogastric tube. In, our, in this case, for our cattle, it's actually passed orally, so it becomes an oral gastric tube. But in order for us to protect our tubes, which can be quite expensive, we don't want her chewing and creating holes in our tube, so we protect it with a Frick speculum. So first, the Frick speculum will go in place, then the tube will be passed down the Frick speculum, and then once it's in the rumen, we made sure um, that it's in the room and then we attach the end of the tube to the large volume pump that we use here and this pump will actually pump a large volume of fluid through the tube and into the rumen. This is a very, very serious type of procedure because one major complication with this procedure is actually administering a large volume of fluids into the lungs instead of the stomach of our animals. So we want to make sure that we're not in the lungs for these animals. And there's many different checkpoints along the way when securing this tube down the esophagus and into the rumen that we must observe in order to make sure we're in the rumen. Um, the first checkpoint is actually whenever we pass this tube into the pharyngeal area of the mouth, the first thing as a bovine veterinarian to remember is that our cattle are indiscriminate eaters. So generally they will swallow more than 99% of anything that's placed into the pharyngeal area. So that's your first thought process in that mostly when we pass this tube, it will actually enter the esophagus and end up in the rumen. But for you to be very sure that that's the case, then what you may want to have happen is you may want to do your checks along the way. So the first thing is if you pass the tube into the animal's pharyngeal area and let's say we're in the esophagus, what will happen is when the person checks, they will apply negative pressure or suck back onto the tube, sorry, and the negative pressure of the esophagus collapsing against the tube will not allow any air to rush into the tube and you will feel that there's something blocking the tube. That's your first very good indication that you're actually in the esophagus. If you're in the trachea and you apply suction, you will find that you will just get air straight through the tube into your mouth and no negative pressure. And that's a good indication that you're in the wrong place and you're in the trachea and not in the esophagus. When you continue the tube down, there's going to be resistance. So the esophagus allows for resistance. So if you're passing the tube, if you want to back up a bit there. So with resistance, what will happen is once you pass, once you pass the tube, it'll be very easy if it's in the trachea. So if you back up again, if it's in the esophagus, what will happen is the person passing the tube will meet resistance. And the resistance he will feel very clearly that you're up against the wall of the esophagus as you're sliding into the animal, resistance. That's your second good indication or checkpoint that you're actually passing through the esophagus and into the rumen of these animals. And thirdly, what we do actually is once we pass the tube pretty far down and we feel that we're in the rumen or during the process of passing the tube, you will listen for air to rush back. Not air like from a normal respiration or breathing or exhalation, but expiration, but air from hitting the rumen gas pocket, which allows for air to kind of gurgle through and you can hear it very clearly. And if you have an abnormal animal with a rumen that's sour, the gas may be sour, then you can actually smell, you can actually smell the contents as it comes through the, room, the tube and, in, and out and smell that it's rumen. Also with our ruminants, we can also have an assistant use a stethoscope and place the stethoscope on um, the flank where the rumen is located on the left side of the cow. So the stethoscope is used to pick up any sort of airflow 
that a person may apply to the tube. So once the tube is placed, the person may actually blow into the tube and the person listening with a stethoscope over the rumen area may actually hear the air rush into the rumen. And that is a very good um, checkpoint to also use to determine that you're in the rumen. So now what we're gonna do is demonstrate the passing of a oral gastric tube into this animal to, apply, to supply or treat the animal with a very large volume of fluid. So the first thing again, I must secure the animal's head in order to place the Frick speculum. Again, be strong, use your legs as leverage to balance yourself. Go ahead and get up underneath the animal and hold on to the animal. I like to hold on to the Frick speculum at the very end, so I have the entire length to work in order to get the Frick speculum beyond that big ball on the back of the animal's tongue. It needs to be placed as far back as you can in order for the tube to hit the pharyngeal area very cleanly and for her to swallow it very cleanly into her esophagus. She will chew and toss your tube around left and right all over the place. She doesn't want it placed in her mouth. So you have to have or apply, supply a bit of force and work the tube, rocking it back and forth until you get it beyond the molars and into um, the pharyngeal area. And then what will happen is uh, your assistant will pass the tube, paying attention to make sure that all the checkpoints are in place and that we clear all the hurdles to make sure that we place the tube into the rumen. So maybe you want to stand over here perfectly. And then I again will use my fingers to lift the left lip of her and rub the roof of her mouth to have her open her mouth. Then I place the Frick speculum, again, rocking back and forth until I secure it over the top, just like then it went over the top of that big ball in her tongue. Now we'll insert the tube and slowly but steadily, yep, keep going. Negative pressure, negative pressure. You have it? Perfect. We'll go, continue. Resistance is there. I can see it. Resistance. Now he's going to listen, listen. Air gurgling very nicely. Air, I can hear it too. Smell. If it's a sour rumen, you most likely will pick up a pretty sour rumen smell. In this case, we're going to now know we're in the rumen. We'll attach it to the pump. I will hang on to the tube just like I am at the end here for my assistant to hold it in place. And then we will slowly, yep, keep it pumped back and forth, administering this large volume of fluid orally to this cow. You can see this cow is chewing aggressively on the Frick speculum, but she, our tube is very protected from her creating a huge pile of plastic. Okay, that's good. So once we're done, we'll pump a few bit of air. So take it out of, yep, pump air, yep, to clear the tube. Then we'll take the tube off of the end of the pump. We'll pinch the tube very aggressively, pinch the tube and then we'll walk straight back, taking the tube out of the cow, all the way out. Then I take the Frick speculum out. Again, she'll have her typical Fleming response. That usually means you've got a very successful procedure, and that's administering a large volume of fluids to our dairy cattle.